Hello everybody, my name is Juan Antonio Juanes. The work we are presenting under the title Methodology for Learning and Acquiring Clinical Skills through Simulation with Artificial Human Models is part of the European project, Educating Students for Innovative Infection Prevention and Control Practice in Healthcare Settings. For this work, we have used clinical simulation techniques with nursing students. As GABA previously described, simulation is a technique for replacing or augmenting real experience with guided experience that evoke or reproduce substantial aspects of the real world in a fully interactive manner. Clinical simulation is understood as the artificial representation of a real-world process with sufficient authenticity to achieve a specific objective, which is known that other than to try to promote student learning by representing as far as possible a more or less complex clinical scenario and allowing the assessment of the training of a specific action of clinical competence. The main objective of our project, based on a simulated protocol, has been to seek safety and efficacy in the students who carry out their practicals in the hospital service in order to avoid, as far as possible, any type of infectious affections for the students who carry them out. The teaching activity was carried out with a group of third-year students from the nursing school of Zamora attached to the University of Salamanca. The clinical simulation experience was developed in pairs of students. All the students in the class were able to follow the procedure from a parallel room at all times using a camera and public addresses system in the simulation room. The whole procedure is followed and evaluated by the teaching staff who involved in designing the didactic action. The assessment of the students include different items that evaluated both, the work carried out by the student and the communication skills that they develop in their interactions with the patient. Once the entire simulation process has been completed by the pair of students, a discussion was held in the classroom in order to assess the mistakes made and resolve the appropriate procedure that should have been carried out. Before discussing the different procedures performed, the students were so images and videos of the correct procedure that should have been applied so that they could see and analyze the mistakes made during the entire performance protocol. To begin the learning protocol, we start with the following clinical scenario. A term newborn, 36 hours old, admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit for meconium aspiration syndrome connected to mechanical ventilation, encouraging central catheters, double lumen umbilical vein, and umbilical artery. The situation begins with the change of nursing shift at 8 a.m. The partner tells that the newborn has been stable, except that he has a lot of secretions from the endotracheal tooth that need to be aspirated. Then, the nanotologist has scheduled a blood test at 9 a.m. to coincide with the determination of gentamicin levels. Right from the start, an effort was made to motivate the students to adopt an active role in, the, their, in their learning process and participation in the simulation test. After introducing the clinical situation presented virtually and described above, the students proceeded to perform it. Throughout the simulation, the student had to verbally indicate their actions and the maneuvers to be performed at each step. 
we sought to develop their students' capacity for analysis, synthesis, and decision making, this being the fundamental axis of this pedagogical tool in order to be able to work well on clinical reasoning. Through this clinical simulation experience, those students who took part in it show a high degree of satisfaction in relation to the implementation of the knowledge acquired in theory and which was staged in the clinical simulation. In summary, after our teaching experience in clinical simulation environments, we can deduce that this training methodology contributes to raising awareness in undergraduate nursing students. Furthermore, it highlights the importance of acquiring the technical skills studied and the attitudes towards safety, teamwork, improvement of care, structured referral, and proper recording to ensure quality patient care. In conclusion, we would like to point out these four most relevant conclusions. First, the use of this teaching resource in training has meant that the different students have gone through the same experience within a safe and confidential environment where it has been possible to develop a formative and, summary and summative evaluation of the activity carried out. Second, the formative evaluation fostered personal and professional development and helped participants to move towards the achievement of objectives. Summative evaluation focused on the measurement of results and the achievement of objectives. Third, our simulation procedure enables students and participants to achieve the intended objectives and practical competencies necessary for the practice of their profession through the simulation experience based on skills acquisition learning. Four, the clinical simulation design carried out provide the necessary framework for effective student learning. Thank you so much for your attention.